Okay, I'm back with another tutorial. This time, I'm going to be doing the menu screen slash title screen. I had made a previous tutorial, but there were some mistakes in it, so I want wanted to make a new one. The issue with the last tutorial is that when I was in Fire Factory, I noticed that sometimes I could use non palleted images. In other words, I could use images that had not been reduced to 256 colors. Um, but it seems like it was only maybe one and may probably would be like one in ten, Im ten images that would work with. So I was originally saying you should use non palleted images, but that's not true. So what's going on is I am taking uh, images that have a lot of color and I'm getting ready to prepare them for Fighter Factory and Yugen. What I'm doing is uh, reducing the colors by posturizing and then turning it into an index image. So the first thing I was doing is, let's see, going to posturize. I believe I was at 46 levels without damaging the, the image. So it still looked good at 46. So then I just change it to a index color. And I'm dithering this with noise this time. And you can see I have transparency unchecked. It seems like noise was actually working well. Even though I can see there's some uh, distortion here or damage, but. Um, Let's see, if noise didn't work all that well, let me try and dither it another way. Pattern often causes problems. It looks like diffusion will probably be the best one for this particular image. Okay, as it turns out, it seems like using pattern was actually the best for those images. Okay, so now that that's done, open your system definition file. You'll find it in Mugen 1 inside the data folder. Now, um, besides the system definition file and the fight definition file, you can also have two intro files intro definitions and you can have a game over and a win screen definition file or wait a minute I think the win screen might be a part of the um, screen pack as is it's probably like the start screen or something so you don't have to make a separate definition file but you do have to for the game over um, screen and this was my game over definition file and this was the first intro and this was the second intro okay I uh, will do a tutorial on how to make those later those are slightly more complicated than making the um, the screen pack definition the system definition uh, than modifying it's more difficult than modifying the system definition file and it's actually one of the things that I haven't truly mastered I'm pretty good at making screen packs but that's the one thing that I found more difficult so um, the first thing you want to do is you want to um, look at the first that's up here ignore this Usually you do want to make a copy instead of modifying the file directly, but after you get good, you can just modify directly. 
Um, just leave all this. I wouldn't really change it even though, because you don't want to change the version date. I don't know about changing the name. Well, wait, I think you, uh, I think there's a place where you, you change the name so you can see what kind of, so, so you can have, um, a different name for your screen pack, but I don't think it's the right area. So anyway, um, the first thing you want to do is you want to change the, the first SPR is going to be for your system um, SFF file, and mine is it's um stands for Ghost in the Shell. Okay, so the system sounds. Um, I told you how to do this before. This is where you you link the system sounds to the storyboard logo was the Atari. Um, intro which was the first one and then the intro storyboard is the was the second intro there's a select definition file and there's a fight definition file which we've already made now for your fonts you only get originally four fonts and font number four is your main menu font um, Font number five is my active menu font. I just made it. It wasn't originally here, so I just had to add another font. Um, since this was commented out, just leave it as is commented out for right now. And um, copy and paste this underneath your JA files. So you, you could leave your JA files alone. Um, ignore this section for right now. This is where you put in music. I'll show you how to do all this later in another tutorial. So now we're going to go to the screen definition, the, the title screen definition, which is the menu screen. Your fade in time is how long it takes for it to fade in because it'll be like a tween or something between screens. And this is your fade out time, and you usually want to leave it, leave, uh, make both of them the same. Your menu position is actually where the menu is going to be positioned on screen. In this case, when I look at the intro screen, which which is what I have, I think the space between here and here is going to be. I said it was about seventy, so that's why I have seventy on the x coordinate. Um, on the y coordinate, I think that the space between here and here is going to be about forty. It's probably not correct. So after I um, put up. Put all the files together. I'll check and then re and then I'll um I'll fix these numbers so it actually it looks like the intro screen. Um, the menu active font was four, which is what I showed you above, and the menu I mean the menu font was four. The menu active font was four, and this number was five. And what that did is that it moved the um X coordinate down some so it kind of looks like the font move when you clicked on it. And then the menu item is spacing. The only important number is going to be the Y value, just the distance between your words. Now you really don't need the um, X coordinate spacing because that would be like having the T arcade over here, and there's really no reason to make a horizontal menu. That's real awkward. I don't think they all of all the um, words were fit on screen, and you can't select it properly. So it's really pretty much impossible to make a horizontal menu. And I'll tell you um, why when we once we get to the bottom section down here. So anyway, um, normally in your menu items, arcade would equal arcade. So you actually have the word arcade up here and so on but the reason why I have A is because this whole word arcade will actually be, just be represented by the letter A in the bitmap font file I showed, you how to do, I showed you how to do this in the last tutorial and so um, since I'm using an image font 
that's um, that's how you basically set it up. Now I don't have exit. I forgot to make exit, but that doesn't matter. In this case, since it was the very last one, I don't think it's going to mess up the. Um, I don't think anything. I don't think it's going to mess up anything. But just to be on the safe side, I erase K. Now, um, the when you margins Y happens to be the distance between. I believe it has to do with. Um, I don't know. It's like I think it might be like the where the cutoff up here would be, or something like that. I'm not sure because even though it says window margins y, which stands for the y coordinate, there's a an x coordinate and a y coordinate here. I'm not sure exactly what that does. I'll get to that later. Visible items is how many um, items you will see on screen before you have to scroll. In this, all the items are there except for, um, I forgot training. That was stupid. So I'm going to have to take out H and leave divisible um, items as 9. You're basically supposed to have all of these. Some people don't put watch, but I use watch for testing um, AI. It was stupid that I forgot training. And I forgot exit. Exit isn't necessarily important because you can just push the, I think, the escape key or back key or something. Um, but that was stupid that I forgot training, so I might fix it. But right now, I'm probably going to leave it as is. So since there's nine visible items, um, I have it equaling nine. The boxer cursor, cursor at zero means it's not visible. At one, it is visible. I had made a stream pack where it wasn't visible, but technically... Um, it's easier to set it, it's easier for it to be visible, it's easier to select things, but because the cursor only, the cursor only fits over, um, your, uh, selection, you cannot have, the, you cannot have a horizontal, um, menu because it would select multiple items instead of just one so that's why you can't have like a, a horizontal menu now the cursor coordinates are what make the box the first two coordinates um, set the X coordinates bottom and top or I mean they set the le left and right now I have no idea why this has a bigger minus number but it might have something to do with um, everything being on the left side of the screen well actually if everything was on the right side of the screen that would make more sense but anyway so the first two numbers set the left and right and then the next two numbers set the top and bottom and I'm probably just gonna have a cover like um, it'll probably go from here to here but I'll just cover the font part and not the the, the de decal um, now these cursor move sounds, cursor den sounds, and cancel sounds are part of your um, system sounds up here and I showed you how to change that in one of the other tutorials so um, hopefully you've already changed so you can just change the sounds I'll probably you know, change the sounds again for this screen pack okay so now we're in the backgrounds, um, which are actually, you know, this background, and then this green is not part of that. So I'll have two backgrounds. Leave the background color at zero zero. Leave this. The first background is going to be an animation because I have multiple shots. So the type will be animation the action number I have down here and it'll be two the start should be zero zero because this is a big background and there's no it's tr trans the trans is going to be none because it's not a or a1 or s the second background is going to be the green image it's a sprite so it'll be type normal the sprite number is going to be um 
it's going to be group 0 image 7 the start position for the y coordinate is going to be 0 because it's touching the top of the screen and the x coordinate is going to be about 5 the distance from here to here and mask is um, I think that's like on top or something I forgot what mask is um, I find that a minute I think one means it's on top of the um, the uh, animation if it was set to zero it would be below it I think now we've already done begin actions but as before this is a group number this is a sprite number these are the, the X and Y offsets and this is the amount of time in game text it's going to um, stay on the screen I think this is game text and not seconds game ticks are um, a 60th of a second so one game tick gives you yeah 60th of a second so this actually might be a little bit higher I think I want this to change like maybe every um, two seconds or so I needed to actually sit a little bit longer for what I, I'm trying to do in this screen pack and I have six uh, different screen different well, views it of uh, Japan. So um, that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to show you how to um, get those images into the system definition file. So you're going to basically go to your sprites, which is right here, and then you're going to open uh, you're going to make a, a, a new file and so the original shot was actually view 3 so that has to go first sometimes you can add comments I would suggest that you add comments um, and we need to align this correctly three sixty and six forty so I guess this means that this is a, this is a, a one of those larger screen packs so I guess this is probably high def. I believe I explained that in one of my earlier tutorials. Okay, so the next image is going to be in any order. I really don't care about the order, but that does have to be the first image. Now uh, it's time to add the very last image of this section, which is formerly the image that I was able to add unpalleted, which means it was like a full two million colors or something. I since then have palleted. It was seems to be the only um, non-palleted images image I was actually able to get working. Don't ask, just don't ask, and don't do that. Just because it worked for me does not mean it works for you. Okay, so now the images have been aligned properly. So save. And save it in your data one folder. I mean your data I'm using one folder. <laughs> 